Okay, I'll start this with a basic drawing of the composition. Here's the reference photo on the bottom left. And I'm using a standard uh, pencil, some basic watercolor paper that you can get anywhere, taped with some masking tape onto a board. I haven't stretched the paper, it'll stretch naturally as it dries when the painting is done. So roughing in the composition, as I said, um, light and dark shapes are important. And this reference, as you can see, good strong light and dark contrast, which is going to really catch the eye. A nice uh, sort of diagonal wave is going to feature strongly in the painting. So starting off with a warm wash using a large mop brush. Good quality uh, mop brush is really a great brush to have to start off. Get all the big washes in nicely. Carries lots of water. Just get that spread in right down. Um, using a bit of tissue here just to lift out a few of the highlights that I'm going to have on the waves. So while the wash is quite wet it lifts off very easy with um, tissue paper but just to make sure I stick to this I'm also going to use a little bit of masking fluid which I'll brush on on some of these spots um, just now so keep up with the general warm wash do the whole painting um, cover it basically with your first wash. It's a very thin layer, it's not going to do any harm, um, but it's sort of the general harmony from the get-go as it were. So got the, the wash in, now I'm going to just get in a bit of the masking fluid, just brush it in, regular masking fluid. Uh, I don't use masking fluid a lot, to be honest, but sometimes like this, the highlights of the waves are really quite prominent. A few of the highlights on the sand as well, not as important because I will um, keep those or sort those out with some pastel. So here's our cool memory point brush and we're going to get this brush to work. Start with the layering in, just build up the warm side of the composition. Now into the water areas, um, laying in also a few touches where I see things are going to develop. And with that green, I'm going to mix it with a bit of the blue and lightly bring it in. And you can see how the blue reacts with the warm under wash as well by making a warm greenish tinge. It is after all seawater and it's built up many uh, transparent layers. It's going to do a lot of good for you, especially watercolor when things kind of happen when you're not looking as the paint is drying and settling down, you get these little spontaneous effects. Um, but first layer is very generous. I don't mind um, runs here and there. doesn't matter. Now the shadow side of the dune, which is important. And some of those nice purple violets, let's bring them into the water as well. Quick flicking brush strokes here. Letting things happen. And... The foliage in the shadow areas, I think a bit of alizarin red. Let that sink in with the purples and let it work its way. And um, strong color, dune grass, also going to feature prominently, I think. More of those greens. And you see how the, the water settles in. You might think, oh dear too much green but it settles in and it looks more natural. The strong sort of orangey reds are going to be the underpinning of the foliage. A 
So with the Wave, as I mentioned, it's going to be quite prominent. So I'm using the Memory Point brush, the particularly the um, strong point and um, edges to get in some nice darks under the Wave. The Upright Wave has a lot of dark color and that dark value is so very important. It actually is what makes the wave. We tend to focus on the highlights of the wave, but it's the darks that are going to give it punch. Just need to bring in quite a bit more dark into the top of this dune. And although this is a few areas slightly spit up, but still work quickly. Getting out some of that masking fluid, just rub it and with your finger pull it off, make sure it's dry. Uh, pastels, really basic selection of uh, unison pastels I'm using here, nice um, strong chalk pastel. And the flatter portions of the sea have more highlights in them, so I'm going to have uh, lighter blues, a very pale violet, and also a sort of an off-white as well. Makes a nice variety. Now the highlights of the wave. I'm using just rough edges here and developing the edges, softening them as well, suggesting sea spray. I'm using basic white um, pastel. Getting that in quite rough. I don't work softly with pastels. I really use them to quite a bit of uh, pressure as well. A bit of um, violet to develop the shadow of the uh, foaming waves. Spread it in with your finger a bit. That's nice and soft and it's not an oil pastel so very workable. I much prefer this to oil pastel, not a big fan of oil pastel to be honest. But um, the form of the wave is now developing, as you can see, a three-dimensionality. So I'm really going to push the limit a little here with a, a very dark uh, blue pastel. Get a strong shadow under the focal area of the wave, focal point. And just take that through for consistency and harmony along the wave. The end result is I want a wave that stands out, it's strong, catches the eye. A few of the softer water elements, a few details in the grass as well. Some nice strong oranges in the shadow grass. It just seems to uh, lend itself to a nice warm red, although it is still, as red goes, it is still cooler than the sun filled reds on the right hand side. Now this path is going to lead its eye into the, towards the water, so we have to work on that. And uh, using the sort of off-white pastel, I'm going to get a, a nice contrasting um, value, light value. Keeping it warm though with the underpainting. But this will lead us in. Break up the shadow with a few dots of color, just suggesting a bit of natural light filtering through. And now with the mop, just softening up some of that pastel to emphasize some shadow. Pretty much done now. Um, I think we've got a good impression going. And as you can see, the dark violet purple shadows working nicely with the yellow complementary colors on the right. So quite happy with this actually and quick painting I think the Kum Memory brush also did a good job. 
and developed a lot of nice shapes. So there it is, two brushes, a mop and the memory point brush working closely together, a few pastels to bring it all nicely and yeah, let's get it off. Take off the tape, get the white strip just to define it a little. End result, pretty pleased with that and uh, sign it off and we're done. And good job on the memory point brush, I think uh, it's part of my painting kit now.